Well, it's uh, been a rainy day today, and uh, I was hoping to get I was hoping to get a little farther up the mountain to camp, but you know I'm up I'm up quite a ways, but it's it's really starting to get dicey up in here. The the road is so muddy and slippery with the it's the roads up here are clay and a little bit of gravel in places, but I'm not going to make it much farther than this. So I already know about this is a good spot in here, so. This is going to be the camp, but the Forest Service has closed that, so this is the end of the road right here. So, I think what I'd like to do, since it's been rainy and everything, it's still daylight. I think I'm going to go ahead and get my fire going, get that going good before I do any camp setup. Now this pine right here looks like it's a pretty dense top on it. Looks like back in there. Yeah, it's it's been getting just a little bit of moisture, but it's but it's fairly dry. So I'm gonna bust out some of that stuff to use for fire starting. Now I've got to kind of mash all this down a little bit, especially when you have these pine needles. They usually have too much space between them to to work well if you don't mash them a little bit. Let's just see if we can. Get a little something going here, a little something happening. Oftentimes you burn your fingers when you're starting these because they, when they start to go, they they flare out and they let, become like a little glow blowtorch. I think I think we're good to go there. So we'll let her rip here. Get some more wood on there. Yeah, some of this wood's pretty, pretty wet on the outside, so I'm just kind of loosely piling it over here. Uh, so, well, so I'll get a chance to uh, to dry out some and then start burning. Well, that was a pretty good fire. Originally, my intention was to go backpacking, and then uh, just things at work just didn't. Uh, just had so much to do. I just uh, wasn't able to get away in time, so I decided to do a closer by camp up here, about uh, 20 miles from home in the West Mountains. I figured I'd uh, hang a hammock uh, and sleep sleep that way tonight, but um, I don't know. I'm kind of where I got to here. I, I wanted to get up higher where I could drop down into a little. Uh, Wanted to drop down into kind of a little more enclosed area to uh, to set up my camp and everything. I was thinking probably I'm just going to throw out the uh, throw out the beast and use that instead of uh, instead of trying to do the the hammock right now. I might do it tomorrow, but for tonight, I think that's what I'm going to do. There's my campfire down there. Just came up a little above that. Up right into here, and I think I'll set up right here in this grass. I actually have very little time to do this because the uh, in fact it might almost be too dark right now, but hopefully not. Okay, I think I'm going to uh, throw down the ground cloth. Because the ground is spongy wet, pretty, pretty soaked. So I'm not terribly concerned about it, but just a little bit of something. I think I would probably be just fine without doing anything but you know go ahead and do it anyway and we got a good chance of rain showers through the night and in the morning so I'm going to put my canopy over So 
try to get this kind of spaced out sort of even now I'll come down in here and do up a couple of snaps here so I'll be able to uh, I'll be able to tag in on the other side all right so Okay. Right. Just got to do what we can here. Shake the poles. Put them to assemble. I'm going to do a video coming up where I show you how to also adjust the how to adjust the tension on the shock cord all right catch this back one here Now we'll catch this front one. There we go. I'm going to have to let it down a ways here. I'm going to need a lower profile so I can be closer to the ground here. something a little bit like that all right now we'll put canopy over the top here Straps right here. We'll go a little more straight out. Well, here's my shelter. Got a rainy, rainy day here today, so I, uh, I put it up and I like I like to be able to see out. So I've got it uh, pitched down on three sides and lifted up on the front side. So I can lay in there. I can see from here down to my campfire. Let me a little lift up there. And there's the back side. I got everything shock corded on the corner so it'll handle the wind good. Yeah, chilly, rainy night here tonight. So I intend to have plenty of hot drink available. I'm going to fill this darn thing right up. Get this thing on the fire for some hot water. That thing start warming up. I've got a, a good little pivot deal right here that that hook goes into because I found it's handy to be able to rotate the spout of this to wherever it works the best. 
it's trying to snow. <laughs> that wouldn't be good if it snowed. I wouldn't even get out of here. Let's see here. Where's the can opener tool? There it is. <laughs> There's too many tools in this thing. How's a guy supposed to? How's a guy supposed to remember all that stuff, man? My Swiss Army, my red Swiss Army knife, the uh, hiker, camper, whichever one it is. I have both. I have several of both, actually. They have cat openers on them, too. All right, this is country style. All right, so I'm going to have some beans. And I'm going to have some corn. This corn's already been shucked. We just didn't cook it yet. But we already had plenty. Should be, should be enough right there. A couple layers of corn. I got butter and salt and pepper and all that jazz. Should really be good. go. These coals have been running ever since I got here. And so I've put my cooking sticks there. Oh, that's, that's going to be more than enough coals. <laughs> there we go. So I made a little pocket right down here. For the coals to sit in. So what I'm going to do. The thing nice about these pot lifters is they work for darn near everything. So close the lid a little bit because I don't want to get a bunch of big chunks of charcoal in there. We have the corn here. So throw the corn right down in there and then pull some coals over top of it. Let it sizzle for a little while. It won't take too long. Okay. Get over that. A little something over top. I actually find if you uh, cover stuff a little little bit with the coals if you still have flame going in the fire the flame of the fire will just burn stuff like really fast so if you can cover it with some coals it actually prevents excess burning all right let's check some corn here I think it should be good Oh yeah, that's how I like it, right there. And I've heated up a little butter in the cast iron skillet. Now I'll we'll, now we'll put me a little salt on there. And a little pepper, of course. Gotta have a little pepper. Give 
give her a try here. Nice hot roasted corn on a chilly evening is good. I love it. To get the rest of the vittles on here. See this, these beans have been done for a long time. But I like to let them sit there and simmer a little extra long so they kind of thicken up a little bit. And I'll dump a little bit of some corn chips in there with them, just for good measure. Corn chips make good spoons. Good grub here. Corn's about too hot to eat. And that's perfect. If it burns your lips off, it's good. Yeah, look it out for my shelter this morning. Man, this fantastic night's sleep. Yeah, the birds are all out there, chirping away. I've had enough sleep and I can't make myself have any more. <laughs> so I suppose I better just get up. <laughs> it's a nice morning, it was rainy, rainy through the night. Yeah, man, I slept so good, I'm like groggy. <laughs> I got, whew, gotta get woke up here. Well, I'm working on getting a fire. Of course, it's rainy th through the night and everything. It's a little chilly this morning. It's, you know, spring day. It's, uh, it's 38. I just checked. It's 38 degrees. So, you know, it's a little on the chilly side. I was wanting to show you starting a fire with some punk wood. And uh, the batteries on my camera had died. And I was trying to stall it long enough. Just trying to get my batteries changed before it start. It started on its own. Most of this wood's a little on the damp side, but it'll dry. But I had last night. I had uh, one log that I'd busted into was soft and punky, and there's a kind of a chunk of it on the ground and so I just got in there and just started with my hands and just started breaking it up and I got about like I say I got about a grapefruit size of this stuff like that and I just started maneuvering around in the coals and I just happened on a spot that had just a tiny bit of coals left from last night and uh, that's what we started this deal from. Yeah, the bark that's on this is sopping wet. I try to get some of it off there. Hit it on a rock, see, and I'll bust it off. The fire's getting going well enough that But pretty soon it'll be it'll be good enough it won't matter but give it a quicker start to bust the bark off. I mean the wood's a little damp underneath the bark. Well it not a little damp, it is damp. <laughs> There's no question about it. Well, I got fire. I use the formula P equals plenty. 
That'll be a good fire. It'll warm up my chili bones. Morse Kahansky teaches that uh, for a warming fire, the fire should be so hot that it forces you to stay about one step, one step, one pace, three feet away from the fire. <clears throat> it kind of seems on the surface, you might think, well, that sounds kind of dumb, but in reality, when a fire has that much heat output, it means, it means it's putting out in a big area here enough heat to warm you. If you're trying to warm yourself over a little fire, you're having to huddle right in there around it. And it really doesn't have, it really doesn't have sufficient heat to really warm you. Well, there's the, uh, there's the headquarters for the night. My beast, my beast with the Osni narrow blanket. That did the trick for me right there. It rained through the night, and I was good to go. So for a warming fire, so for a warming fire, why do I need a fire that I have to stay a few feet away from? How much radiant energy do you have because you have a large fire, even though the, maybe the overall temperature of the fire isn't any greater, the amount of radiant energy might be a hundred times greater. So it's like trying to warm yourself with a butane lighter or trying to warm yourself with a big fire. The big fire may not actually temperature wise be any hotter, but it has more radiant energy and that radiant energy can penetrate your clothing and penetrate your body and warm you up. So that's why you need a so you need a sufficient fire if you really want to warm up. Well, I'm getting some poles ready. It was uh, kind of started out a nice morning and then clouded up again and it started to rain. So I think I'm going to put a uh, parachute over my fire. It's going to make it a little shorter. I'm going to trim the crooked parts off here. I like to be small as I can on the end, but But it's worse to be crooked because it's pretty hard to get a decent lashing on the end when you're crooked. Just to make a little better lashing. There we go. Knock a little of that bark off of there because it's not exactly tight on there. Makes it makes it work on the parachute a little better. So if I stick my finger in there in between each one of these and I make myself two wraps would be good enough, but I did three. Okay now Go down in between here. We don't really want to be, we don't really want to be all that tight here because we're making a big wide footed triangle, tripod, I mean. So the common mistake is to lash to do this tripod lashing too tight. You know, we're not we're not building a 
We're not building a tower or anything. Well, so I have a dilemma. Apparently, apparently I took my PD shelter. I had it in my organizer drawer in my truck. I don't remember ever taking it out of there. But it's not in there. So doing a PD shelter over the fire, it ain't happening today. But I'll be danged if I'm not going to put something over the fire for when it rains. So I'm going to do something I've done. I did a few years ago quite a bit. Before I, before I did the PD shelter. I've got my 10x10 10 10 multicam tarp. It's like the original multicam tarp I made. That thing is old and it's got so many experiments on it it looks hideous. But... <laughs> Nevertheless, it will work. So my thought is, I'm going to put the tripod poles up. All right, so I secured me a carabiner here to the top of the tripod, and put a cut another cord through through this end of it, and tie that off to the center tab on my PSTL tarp, and. Hopefully I can position this over the fire, get the tripod where I want it, and then and then pull the tarp up with the cord while I'm kind of holding it out of the way of the fire at the same time. Whew, it's gonna be spooky. Stand this beast up. Well, here's the deal you got to have adaptable gear you got to have deer, gear you got to have gear that will do more than one thing uh, stuff you can set up in a lot of different ways that's that's why we've got what we've got not only that but you yourself got to be adaptable you know I really had my heart set on doing that PD shelter because I knew it was going to be rainy and stormy so that'll be beautiful over the fire but now I'm forced with having to do something not as good, but try to make the best of it. So, here we go. I want to use the carabiner up top. I could just use a, a loop and a rope or something, but I want this to slide very easily. Uh, to start off with, I want to put it high, high as I can. There we are. Now I've got to take out some of the slack in here to try to make this, you know, a, a better looking shelter. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to look good at all. I can do whatever I feel like, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to take and fold back some of that. You see that, that takes up a bunch of the slack in here. And I just pull that down. So that kind of so that kind of cleans up this end of it. And this one here, there's actually a couple options. I could actually put a pole in here, you know. And uh, but if it gets cold, I want to trap some heat in there. So I don't want to do that because the heat will escape. So I want to really do the same kind of thing again. So. I'm just going to bring it across like that. All right, so I've got my shelter here. I'm uh, pretty good if it, if it were to rain on me or whatever. I can sit under here out of the rain. The uh, fire will keep me warm. I can cook. I can do whatever I need to in the shelter and be out of the rain. But this is probably something you don't want to do with your favorite tarp. Um, this one is permanently, permanently smoked. It's like smoking deer, like a deer hide or whatever. 
<laughs> it's got kind of a tan color to the inside of it. And it won't come out. I've tried. It's permanent. So in case of emergency, I would do this without hesitation to uh, get myself some warmth overhead and to keep myself around the fire without being wet. There's a shot from one angle here. It's just a crude, uh, crude tripod. And I'm hanging a square tarp, our PSTL 10 foot by 10 foot. I'm hanging that square tarp inside that triangle. So that keeps the fire out of the rain and um, keeps me out of the rain so I could cook around the fire or just sit around the fire. And even if it rained or snowed, I would be toasty warm inside of there because that traps heat up inside the canopy. It does mess with your tarp. I won't lie to you about that. Because <laughs> your tarp is going to be permanently smoke flavored. I've, I did this on this tarp years ago. I did, a, I did a whole winter and spring of using this thing. And it's still waterproof. So I mean it hasn't like hurt it. But you can see I've I've done some stuff here. I've used some easy clip middies. You could use minis as well. I just happened to grab the middies. But just to take up the slack because we're going, you know, we're going in a tripod shape with a square tarp. So I had to take a little slack out in a couple places just to you know, just to get it so that it would kind of hang here properly. It probably looks ugly, but like I say a lot of times you talk about style in the outdoors. A lot of times style in the outdoors is being warm and comfortable, being out of the elements. And uh, a lot of times it doesn't really matter what it looks like. What matters is does it do the trick for you. You know, it's like 10 or 10.30 I think, I gotta have breakfast. I got in, see I got into all of this stuff right here, like I always do. Always getting sidetracked, always getting projects or hiking or whatever I'm doing and then breakfast is like the last thing I think of so I think it's time to actually do breakfast well it's coming down snow here that's a little snow flurries keep happening Well, I think this is the first snowstorm for the beast. We got some snow coming down here. And it's cozy inside of here. Well, I've weathered through the storm. We've got kind of the tail end of it, the breakup here coming. Uh, you know, we had snow and rain, we had some hail, we had snow pellets, we had wind, <laughs> we had all kinds of fun stuff. And uh, a lot of it you saw that I, I spent a lot of time in here, I did some whittling, some various things, you know, just piddling around underneath my shelter here. I also went down to the beast and I was actually going to take it down and uh, it was just so comfortable I got in there I just laid down and had a nap. <laughs> so, I, so I slept for a good little while in the beast and, and, uh, and I, uh, I woke up and the storm was the break up some blue sky out here now and all that so but it's the end of my camp for, for this week. But I uh, thought I might fire the fire back up because it burned through everything. And if I can get it going in time, I have myself one last little treat before I go home. So, well, there goes the fire. It just started. So I guess we're doing the treat. <laughs> and uh, so I had a great time. It was a nice learning experience. Um, I don't really ever go anywhere that I don't have... Uh, experience. I don't have something that I learn. You know, I camp virtually every week, 
And there, there's something every week that I learn. You'd think by now I'd be smart, but <laughs> I, apparently I still have a lot of things to learn because I keep learning stuff. <laughs> but anyway, it's part of the fun for me. Uh, just doing some different things and being out here and, and just enjoying the nature and just enjoying being out. I'm going to uh, take it down and I'd like to leave it, but the uh, the Forest Service doesn't really like us, you know, and in areas particularly like this, they don't like us building structures and leaving them there, so. Get down and I'll stash it over here, kind of out of the way a little bit. And if I come back up here again and it's still there, I might use it again, because I've already made it once. Well, I'm getting ready to knock off camp. I've got everything packed up except for this last little bit around the fire. But uh, have you ever had fried cookies? I don't know, I haven't, but I'm gonna try it. So I've got, these are some chocolate chip pumpkin cookies. They're made in the bakery of our grocery store. And they are just excellent. I have uh, scraped some coals from that fire over underneath my cooking area here and put my cast iron skillet there and it's appears to be plenty hot <laughs> okay so Let me just set a cookie in there. And let's see what happens here. Let's see, I take this thing. I'll stick another cookie in here. And let's try that and see what happens. I think next time I do it, I'm going to try. See that and got, it got crispy all right. It wasn't coming along, so I added a bunch of coals underneath, and I'm like, uh, I think I added too many. I think I'm going to try next time, maybe next time I come camp, and I might fill the skillet up and do like I do when I make scones. And get some, you know, really hot oil like for scones, and drop the cookies in there and see what happens. So it's crisping up. In any event, the bottom is, the bottom is crunchy, and the, yeah, I'm too hot. The chocolate's melted on the bottom, but not up into it. So, we'll make this attempt, attempt number one. And I'm going to try, well, there we go again. <laughs> That's actually pretty good, this cookie, where it did crisp it. Because normally this, these cookies are really, really soft. And now I got a little crunchiness there on the bottom. That tastes kind of good. I like it. Even like the chocolate chips are a little crispy. If you enjoyed some of the stuff I put on the video. And uh, it's always some kind of adventure, some sort or another. A lot of times I don't know what the adventure is going to be till I get here. <laughs> so, regardless, we just deal with it and have fun. So, Perry Peacock Wilderness Innovation. Absolutely loving my time in the outdoors. Even though today I didn't hike anywhere or anything, I just, I sat most of the time by the fire under my canopy, watching it rain and snow and junk like that, and just piddled around. It was a very relaxing camp. I really had a great time. So you don't always have to be busy. You don't always have to have a schedule. Um, sometimes it's nice just to do practically nothing. So enjoy your time in the outdoors. We'll see you on the next go-round.